Hello YouTube, and welcome to another Doctor Who product review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the 13 Doctors set, which I do believe is the biggest ever product that I reviewed on this channel, and probably by the end of it, I'll have a mental breakdown, won't have a voice, and I'll probably be crying in a ball somewhere. So first off, I'm going to be taking a look at the very big packaging that I'm going to need to cross over to a space without the white background, because it is inconveniently big. As you can see, the box is pretty much exactly the same to that of the initial version, including the really nice TARDIS design. However, this time the TARDIS has been updated to be that of the Series 9 version, but generally the box overall is exactly the same design idea to that of the 5.5 Collector Series. Along the bottom, we get the Doctor Who logo, along with the title of the set, and then to the side of this, we get the features, just in case you're unaware. What was the difference between this one and the previous one, along with the American Safety Sticker and Underground Toys logo at the bottom? The side of the box features pretty much exactly the same information from what we've seen on other products. The back of the box is quite bland, we just have the prototype images of all the figures in the set, along with some company information once again. Open the box, it's pretty much exactly the same idea to the initial version. As you can see on the inside doors, we get some information about each incarnation of the Doctor, along with some dates and the episodes that they are from, which the majority of them are probably wrong. And then of course in the centre, we get all of the Doctors nicely presented. And then of course to finish off the product, at the very bottom, we get the individually numbered sticker, minus 2392. So first up, we have the first Doctor, because you know in numerical terms that'll probably be a sensible place to start. This is the first Doctor as seen in the web planet apparently due to this being the 1960s though however we don't really have any accurate colour source material of what the costume would have actually looked like in that story therefore character options and underground toys I've just decided to go for a brown palette for this one because hey why not it's not black grey or white as like the other previous William Hartnell figures that we've got. Taking a closer look at the face as you can see it looks absolutely excellent much like the original version it's been sculpted incredibly well we have a lot of different creases and eye bags and really making them look very aged it's been really well done however this time we've had quite a lot of revised paint apps on the face he generally looks a little bit paler than normal which is nice to see the eyebrows have been done very well and we also have an updated version of the eyes this one is now a little bit more natural and we have sort of a little bit more of a toned down version of that the back now the hair has also been done slightly differently it's now been done in a slightly darker tone of paint with a lighter highlight applied to the top this is a lot darker compared to the original not gonna lie i don't know if i like it as much i think i quite like the original because it just generally looked a little bit brighter but this one is still a welcome change and I do quite like the variation. Going down to the costume now where everything changes we have all the brown stuff. Now this is exactly the same to the original version generally just painted in a brown colour so it is slightly inaccurate to what is seen in the story so starting off at the top we have the white collar this has been done rather well actually we have sort of a black pinstripe on there along with the cravat which has also been done in sort of a cream colour with a black pinstripe applied to this and then we have the brown waistcoat underneath that have a sort of toffee brown style of colour in there along with a black highlight applied to the top of this along with a pinstripe with a few dots on really making it look like the design as seen in the story however once we get to the monocle as seen in the middle it all goes a little bit pear ship and all the lines past this sort of got a little bit weird and sloppy which is a shame but however probably can't be helped the jacket over the top is generally exactly the same we have the same applications of the collar along the buttons at the bottom there along with some pockets as well as some stitching lines that have been applied to the back of the sculpt of course at the bottom of this we get the brown trousers once again carrying on the William Hartnell theme of being rather checkered so we have a brown design underneath this along with a red line applied to the top really giving this nice checkered effect. Then to finish off at the very bottom we do get the shoes which have been done rather nice in sort of a very dark brown colour along with some white spats that have been applied with two black buttons applied to this. Doing a comparison with the original San Diego Comic Con William Hartnell, as you can see generally it's nothing too much new, it's exactly the same sculpt just with a few revised paint apps there, but what you can really tell is the revised paint apps on the face, I think that the ones on the new version are a vast improvement, however I still do like the initial version, I do like the brown edition theme on the costume, but it would have been nice however to see a Ken, because the majority of William Hartnell figures do come with them regardless, even if he didn't have it in the story, it sort of still finishes off the figure quite well, so it would have been nice to see it. Next up we have the second Doctor story, The Two Doctors, so this is a 80s take of Patrick Troughton, however, once again takes on exactly the same sculpt to all the previous Patrick Troughton figures, first seen on the San Diego Comic Con 2009 Tomb of the Cybermen set. A closer look at the face, as you can see, a similar situation to the Hartnell figure, it's been revised to make it look a little bit more natural, therefore the pink rings around the eyes are now absent, and we have a little bit more of a toned down paint application on the face as a whole. So in an 80s story, I guess generally the face sculpt is meant to look a little bit older, however, this choice has not been taken, probably 
presumably because of cost reasons and the whole of this set is in fact pre-used sculpts. But still have the creasing on the face, the eye bags, the jawline, and generally it does look aged and generally it does look like Patrick Troughton's. Her hair has also taken on a slightly different tone, much like the Hartnell figure, where we now have this sort of grey highlight applied to the top along with this darker grey underneath. This has been done rather nicely. Some people like it, some people hate it. Personally, I think it looks not as good on camera. I think that some of it applies a little bit darker on camera. Taking a closer look at the costume now, much like every single Patrick Troughton figure, there's nothing really too much in it because it's exactly the same sculpt to every single Patrick Troughton figure that we've got in previous releases. So as you can see, we have the shirt at the front, which has been very well done. We have the baggy texture on this, and this time it's been done in a lighter blue colour compared to that of the much darker blue on the original version. We have the bow tie, which has been nicely done, put on an angle on purpose, much like how it was in the actual series. However, this time it's been painted in a dark blue colour along the white polka dot applied to the top of this. We of course have the overcoat over the top, which has been done very nicely. We have the details of the collar on there, along with the creasing and the buttons on the sides of the jacket as well. So much like every Patrick Troughton figure, we have the big massive baggy pockets at the bottom, which protrude from the sculpt very nicely. And then of course on the back, much like the Hartnell figure, we have the same detailing applied along with the buttons, the stitching, and a bit more creasing. Thank you on this figure is this time a weird colour where you have a few colours chucked in there. But finally at the bottom we have the trousers. Once again these have been revised so therefore we have a pea green colour along the darker blue applied to the top of this and generally overall just look like that of a checkered pattern. We end off the figure we have some standard brown shoes. In comparison now to the original San Diego Comic Con Patrick Troughton. As you can see I think I like the original one more because it's generally fitted to the sculpt a little bit better. Of course the newer version is meant to replicate that of him many years later in the two doctors therefore it's generally inaccurate overall. However, it is still a nice addition. I think they've done quite a good job of making it look slightly different, and it's still nice to see another representation of Patrick Troughton out there, because there isn't really that many as it is. However, a similar thing to the Hartnell figure, he doesn't come with a flute, even though that his hand is clearly sculpted to hold one. It still would have been nice, even if he didn't have it in the two Doctors, just to have it anywhere to finish off the figure. Next up, we have the third Doctor, as seen in the Three Doctors, and not the Time Monster, as it nicely points out on the box. At least to keep your episodes right, guys, it's not that hard. But yeah, this is a figure that everybody has been wanting to see for years. If you've been a classic fan of collecting the classic figures since they're released back in 2009, this has been one up there with one of the most popular wanted figures, because it's just one of those costumes that is extremely iconic. However, once again, it is one of those costumes that is pretty much exactly the same sculpt to virtually every single John Pertwee figure that we've seen in the line so. So far and there's been a lot of them honestly. So the face for this release is slightly different to that of the previous ones and I didn't really notice this before actually reviewing it. It does tend to be a little bit more darker as you can see in certain parts. We have a few details that have been never really used before such as this weird odd black line that has now been applied to the top of the eyes which I don't quite know if I like or not. I think it looks slightly weird. However we still do have some of the same details applied from the previous versions. This time the lips have been rather well done in sort of this odd palish colour. a little bit better compared to that of the B&M version that we got in early 2016 which just didn't tend to have paint apps on the lips at all, making him look really weird. But generally, overall, it okay sculpt. However, so it does look a sort of a little bit harder in paint apps compared to that of the other versions, and I don't know if I like that because. The hair this time, not really too much in it. It's generally exactly the same to that of the original. We have a few curls and things in there, along with a lighter wash and a darker one below, really bringing out some of the details of the costume now. So with me, everyone, is exactly the same sculpt to the original version. Surprise, surprise. This time we do have a few of the details that have been seen in the three Doctors actually applied to this one through printing, so that is okay. So we have this nice black line that's been applied to that of the sides of the collar. Along with this really nice design there, we have the different details around the buttons, which have been really well done, along with the fake pocket applied to the top top of the jacket. We have the bow tie and the throws of the shirt underneath which has been done much like the other previous figures. Really nicely done though however and the details generally overall are a really nice red colour along with a lot of different bits of creasing and pocket design some stitching on there as well. The thrills of the jacket sticking out of the bottom there along with a bit more black piping design and then the legs at the very bottom are just exactly the same really to other John Pertwee figures which are just a black colour along with some black shoes at the bottom. Along the figure also comes with the sonic screwdriver. Nothing really too much new here whatsoever. It's exactly the same to the other ones. However, the paint apps do tend to be a little bit sharper and the details do tend to be a little bit better. This is a handful of the other ones. I think it's the majority of them though, however, I've sort of lost count. But yeah, they're generally overall it's exactly the same, isn't it? Exactly the same sculpt from what we've seen before. The one of the only two sculpts that we've actually ever seen, I do believe. But yeah, generally overall, this one is just nice to see in the collection finally after years of people wanting it. And I think that if the third Doctor Lion is to end at any point, I think that this one's definitely a nice one to end on.
Next up, we have the fourth Doctor in his Season 18 outfit. The box specifies that this is from Legopolis, but to be honest, there isn't really much that sets this apart from any other Season 18 story. And it is a very nostalgic figure for me, because as some of you probably know, this is the first ever figure that I reviewed on this channel back in December 2010. Hello everybody and welcome to my first review. Of course, the original version, which is now turning out to be quite rare, so it's nice to see this figure re-released for the people that don't have the original version, but it turns out that this set in itself is also quite rare now, sort of defeated the objective but the original figure was absolutely brilliant one of my personal favorites and this one is essentially updates of a brilliant figure so if anything it's probably one of the best figures in the set so due to this figure being from the later half of the fourth doctor tenure this is of course using the older sculpt where we have the much more random curls in the hair and generally looks slightly older compared to the original versions as well as a little bit more grumpy i do also have a few revised paint apps on the face once again it looks generally a little bit paler compared to the original version so again it's in the much more random sculpt where we have a few pieces sticking out here and there but generally overall the highlight does tend to be pretty much the same compared to the original version however a little bit more sloppy and less sharp so we enter the costume now we once again have a slightly different updated paint app compared to the original version where we have a slightly different coat over the top this is a lot more of a darker burgundy however the same details are still present so we have the details of the stitching around the collar as well as the lines from the buttons as well as the buttons themselves which are now in sort of a more chocolatey brown color which shirt underneath has once again been done really well we have a bit of the chest exposed at the top of long of the sculpting of the adam's apple and we also have the collar with a few pieces of creasing on as well we a few pockets to either side as well as a bit of creasing as well as this belt piece with the two buttons applied to this the very top of this we get the shoulder pads which is once again in a darker burgundy shade. It overall does tend to be made of a much harder less bendable PVC and then exposing the trousers underneath you do have the sculpting present of the trousers having a few details on there as well some creasing and then of course at the very bottom we get the burgundy boots once again with a bit of brown weathering on there and a few darker patches. A season 18 Tom Baker figure will be complete without his scarf once again this is exactly the same sculpt to the original being all one piece and we have a lot of different bits of burgundy detail on this but what is nice to see it's a lot more precise we do have still have the same creasing details however this time we have a few more of the smaller details on there including the lines in the individual pieces as well making it look a lot more accurate to that as seen in the series so of course this figure does come with the sonnet screwdriver this is exactly the same to the majority of releases having the red emitter and the black line Doing a comparison now to the original counterpart, as you can see both of them are absolutely excellent. This figure is essentially an updated version of a pre-existing excellent figure. Both of them have some amazing details. I really like the new developments on the newer version, especially the scarf, and I like the darker paint apps. However, I still like the original face a little bit more. I don't know what it is with it, I just think that it looks a little bit better, but yeah, of the best figures in the set. Next up we have the fifth Doctor, this is where Underground Toys reached a problem because they've pretty much done every single design possible for the fifth Doctor with the pre-existing sculpt. So this is the fifth Doctor apparently as seen in The Awakening, to be honest much like the fourth Doctor, there's nothing really that sets this figure out between any other stories in season 21, they have just gave it the title from The Awakening to make it sound a little bit more different than it actually is. And first off taking a look at the face, I think they've also reached a little bit of a problem with this one because he looks a tad weird, as you can see he looks a little a bit like he's pulling a bit of a pout or a baby face i've seen quite a lot of them with these issues and i don't really know if it's a thing that's a reoccurring thing for the whole set but yeah generally overall i think they've sort of lost the peter davison likeness in their turn extent i think the eyes are especially quite good however the mouth i don't know what the hell's going on with it but yeah moving away from the face got sort of disturbing me a little bit but yeah the hair has been done rather well we have sort of the blonde texture in there along with a few darker tones in there the stream itself is nothing really too different from the original we have a few bits of shading underneath the collar which is nice to see including a bit of green in there along with the question marks as per usual with the shirt underneath of the cricket jumper over the top of the very really nice texture on there different rows of the red and black which once again i do believe is accurate to season 21 it's nice to see that the celery has had a few different paint apps in there now with a few different shades of green as well as a yellow stalk which is nice along with a few apps on the stalk itself tubing on the coat is a little bit more of an orangey colour to the previous version, something that we've never in fact seen before, and to be honest, I don't know if I like it, sort of a little bit of a toned down of the original version. The overcoat itself, nothing really too much to talk about, we have the buttons painted black for some reason, and we have the additional piping of the red around the sides, along with a bit of additional creasing. Along the back, it's nothing really too much to talk about whatsoever, mine has an annoying dent in the side, and we have a sort of weird line going down the middle. Moving down to the trousers, once again, an odd sort of weird tone added to this, reminding me a little bit of rhubarb and custard but we have a little bit of sort of a custardy paint app on there along with a pinkish line applied to this the same detailing however applies for that of the original where we have a little bit of creasing on there along with the shoes which for some reason are incredibly muddy making it look like that it's been stomping a few puddles 
Iconic for this figure also includes a few updated paint apps. You have the red emitter along with the gold banding. However, what's really nice to see, and I do believe for a first ever time, you also have the inclusion of the white band going through the middle. But as the box clearly states, this figure is apparently from The Awakening. And of course, the fifth Doctor Sonic screwdriver blown up very early on in his era there. Therefore, this Sonic shouldn't in fact be with the figure. But in comparison now to the previous fifth Doctor figures available, as you can see, it's not really that interesting. To be honest, the original fifth Doctor figure wasn't really that interesting. And I think that this one may even be a little bit more boring. The other coat is a little bit darker which is nice to see however I like the red lining on the original version a little bit more but I just think that nothing will beat the season 21 resurrection of the Daleks one now. I think it's a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more interesting and the new one is just a little bit too dull. What comes up after the number five? Oh yeah the best Doctor ever. It's of course the sixth Doctor played by the amazing Colin Baker. Now this figure especially is a brilliant figure because it is the big finish costume not the real time one as the box cleverly states even though this is complete different to that of the real time figure this is exactly like the ones I've seen on the big finish covers so for the first time ever we have a properly accurate big finish release which is absolutely brilliant for a start it's the sixth doctor and big finish at the same time can it get any better than this to be honest I'm half tempted to make a video on this figure alone because I think I could talk about it for absolutely ages the first sculpt for this figure is pretty much the same to other sixth doctor releases we have a really nice likeness to Colin Baker in there would it be nice to see a different sculpt for the first maybe having the slightly bigger afro but hey i've lost hope a very long time ago for that but we have a few highlights and details on there of the blonde and the darker bits of brown which is nice to see very well done once again as per usual of the majority of sixth doctor figures Gym itself is where it's all at. This is exactly the same to the original version, having exactly the same patterns. However, all the previous colours have been taken out and replaced with shades of blue. This is a lot more vibrant to that of the real-time version that we've seen back in Comic-Con 2009. Of a lot more different shades of blue on this and a lot more different bits of detail. Shirt at the bottom is white. However, what's really nice to see is the question marks now blue instead of red. And we also have the waistcoat itself, which has been done incredibly well with different rows of different shades of blue in there, ranging from light blue to dark blue. And then we have the cravat, which has been nicely done also with a dark blue with a black polka dot. So have the addition of the gold chain, which has been incredibly well sculpted, having the different hoops and things on there. We also have the detailing of Colin's cat badge once again, which I do believe is molded on one of his cats from the 1980s. I kid you not. Down to the back of the figure. Now we have more multiple details of the different shades of blue. And then we have even more shades of blue on the back one. Once again, replicating that of exactly the same costume as televised on TV. However, with the different blue shades instead. So we have darker blue at the top, lighter blues over here, a really nice row of pale blues around here, as well as a few different bits of creasing on there, the coat flows incredibly nicely. The trousers this time round have been done in a darker blue, however this time with the black pinstripe line applied to this, and then at the very bottom we get sort of a darker blue black style of shoe, not really too much detail to talk about there. The inside of the coat has also been done a blue colour, and generally overall everything about this figure is blue, and it's absolutely gorgeous, and is the best figure of the set, and I'm not just saying that because it's Colin, it actually is the best figure in this set. For the first time in a very long time, the Sixth Doctor does in fact come with the Sonic Lance accessory. I do believe not seen since at least 2010, so it's nice to finally see this design back once more. This time it's had a few revised paint apps. It's now black and we have a silver lining down either side, as well as the red emitter, and it finishes off the figure incredibly well. Doing a comparison now to the original 2009 Comic-Con real-time costume of the Sixth Doctor, just ending off a few things that people did in fact wonder. This is in fact completely different to the real-time version, as you can see, there is a lot less shades of blue on the costume and more different bits of checkered patterning on the big finish version. So it is essentially a completely different costume in its own right and nothing like it whatsoever. And of course, on the back, the same thing applies. The big finish version follows that of the TV costume, however, just in shades of blue. And the real time version is a lot more plainer. We just have one standard shade of blue throughout. So yeah, as I say, a completely different costume in its own right and absolutely nothing like the Comic-Con version. We have the Seventh Doctor sporting his ghost-like outfit, which seems a not really very interesting figure, but it turns out upon purchase that this figure is a little bit of a reward for all of those classic fans that have collected figures from the very beginning, but it's nice to finally see some of those errors fixed and overall a nice representation of Sylvester McCoy that is a little bit different from the others. Firstly, taking a look at the face, as you can see once again, this is the non-hatted version that came in the previous Eleven Doctor set so the hatted version has remained a sculpt exclusive to that of Forbidden Planet. It's been done incredibly well. I 
really like the way that we've got the creasing on there on the face. And it, it, overall, it looks very sharp and much like Sylvester McCoy. The skin tone has been made a lot paler also, making him look a lot more lifelike. And the hair has also been done incredibly well, having a lot of different brown brush strokes in there. Going down to the costume, once again, it's excellent. I've always loved the Sylvester McCoy figure costume. I think it's been captured incredibly well. At the very top, you have the collar, which has been done nicely on the white shirt and the tie. For some reason, they got rid of the blue on the tie and replaced it with silver, which looks slightly odd. Jumper underneath this, which once again has been printed incredibly well. A vast improvement compared to that of the original, where it looked crammed towards the bottom. It does tend to be a lot more equal now, and the question marks have been printed on really nicely. It over the top has been sculpted also incredibly well. We have the collar along the scarf underneath, nicely tucked below this. Once again, the blue and the silver has been removed from the scarf, and this time replaced with green, which chain is now a silver colour as opposed to the gold for all of the previous Sylvester McCoy figures. So it's nice to finally see that improved upon. Handkerchief, which has been done in once again a green theme of a colour. At the back, we have a few different creases applied to this along the back belt piece and a few stitching lines. And at the very bottom, once again, exactly the same sculpt. However, we've had a few revised paint apps on the trousers. Once again, this is taking on a little bit of a pea green colour along with a few additional blue line detailing in there. Finish off at the very bottom, the shoes are a lot more lighter and we have some white spats on these and finish off the figure really nicely. Seventh Doctor figure will be complete without his umbrella. Once again, exactly the same sculpt to the original. However, the paint apps have also been revised on this, which now mean the red is a little bit more of a matte shade of red compared to the glossy red. Personally, I do like the glossy version a little bit more because it was nice and shiny and looked like how it did in the actual series. And then also as an additional accessory, we do also get the Seventh Doctor Sonic Screwdriver, which is technically also the Eighth Doctor one. We have a few little details on this, including a gold band and the red emitter. However, it wasn't actually seen in Ghost Light or the TV series itself in that meta. It was only seen in Doctor Who the movie. Comparison now to the previous Sylvester McCoy figures available. As you can see, it fits in really well. I love the new details on this new version, especially the trousers and the updated chin. I also really like the new paler facial tone because I think it looks a little bit more alive. But overall, generally, the Sylvester McCoy figure was brilliant to start with, especially the cream one. I absolutely love this figure. But yeah, it's nice to see an updated version. It was all going so well. Here we have the eighth Doctor. I guess the first now of the new series Doctors because this is theoretically a new series costume, I guess, in whatever way you look at it, but he's also the classic Doctor. It's also a little bit confusing, and I don't really tend to care, but this is him as seen in the Night of the Doctor, a sculpt that we've actually not really seen that long ago. It was a part of the Collector series, and it's now got a ton of blood, or whatever it is, spattered all over his face. It's a little bit of an odd figure, much like the Fifth Doctor one, where they've sort of ran out of things to do, therefore they've sort of just gone, oh, let's do this. Personally, it would have been nice, I think, to see just a few random colours shoved on the movie sculpt, you know, and calling it a comic book version again, because at least that one will be slightly better than whatever the hell this thing is. So the face itself does sort of look like Paul McGann. Personally, I sort of like the actual classic version of the figure a little bit more, especially the sculpt. I just think it looks a little bit too soft. However, I still think it does look like Paul McGann. It should have a few creases though on the face, however, and make him look a little bit more aged, you know, like he's actually not been in the role for 20 years, much like how he did in The Night of the Doctor. However, it's still a nice sculpt. Unfortunately, it's got a lot of jam all put all over it, you know, which is, it looks a little bit more worse on camera, to be honest, than what it does in real life. It's sort of, it's an okay idea. Around the back, we have a few curls and things and a few bits of different strands of hair sticking out, which is nice to see. Really, the details on the coat and the waistcoat are exactly the same. We have sort of the neckerchief piece, which is the nice blue colour. The collar over the top of this, which is sort of the creamish colour, which generally is an excellent sculpt. I love this figure. It's just a shame that they've needed to re-release it again. The waistcoat is also nice. We have a few creases and things on there, along with the buttons and the chain coming down from this, which is nice to see in an excellent way that they've used the material there. The coat itself is also exactly the same, with the same details of the collar and the buttons and the stitching applied to this along with the shirt sticking out the bottom however this time we've had a lot of different scratch designs applied to this a lot of different dust effects and mud effects making it look really battered and stretched and then at the very bottom we get the same brilliant details of the trousers with all the muddy defects on and then as well as the bottom where we have the boots which have been nicely done with the same different lacing designs on there along with sort of the dust feature applied to this once again much like the Seventh Doctor figure it does in fact come with exactly the same sonic screwdriver with exactly the same details Doing a comparison now to the original Collector Series 2015 version of the Night of the Doctor, Eighth Doctor, I absolutely adored that figure. I think that it is absolutely excellent. And I partly like this one as well because it is exactly the same sculpt. Therefore, I have to like it because it is essentially the same. However, it's just sort of ruined by the blood effect on its face. I just think for a Collector Series box set when all of the other figures are nicely intact and are nicely clean, then we have this random one in the middle. Although it's a variant, I just think that it looks a little bit odd in an overview of the whole of the 
set having this random one in there. And as I say, it would have been nice just to see some random colours slapped on the movie one again and calling it a comic book version. And moving on to the War Doctor figure, a figure that previously wasn't even in the last set because he wasn't even thought of because he was a random thing plucked out of Moffat's mind. And this figure is a random thing plucked out of character options mind. As you can see, they were sort of struggling for this one because they needed to create another version of the War Doctor that wasn't exactly the same to the previously extremely rare version. And this is what they've came up with, an extremely brown variation. I can't exactly sum up this figure more than everything is darker. I don't really like it too much, to be honest. I absolutely love the initial version, but now I just think that everything is too dark. The scarf is exactly the same, with the same details on there. We have the buttons in the middle, along with the nice little medallion piece and the chain. However, the coat itself is just extremely dark. We still have a few creases and things on there. However, it's got to the point where the really nice weathering and all the different patches and things have now been sort of taken out of that because of the paint apps that have been applied to the top, making it a too darker thing even to the trousers where they're now too dark as well and the boots are also too dark everything about the figure is extremely too dark and I just think that they've needed to turn the contrasts up a bit in order to make it look a little bit different however I sort of respect them for that at the same time because of the people who actually spent a lot of money on the original version and the facial expression is still good though however once again looks exactly like John Hurt however surprise surprise the hair has been made darker don't have a clue why <sighs> And of course, much like the previous War Doctor release, he does also come with the sonic screwdriver, exactly the same design to the original, and still a really nice little prop. Doing a comparison now to the original much better version in my opinion, as you can see, it looks a lot better doesn't it? The weathering looks a lot better, the only thing that I do in fact like about this new version a little bit more is the weathering on the boot pads and the waistcoat underneath, I just think that that looks generally a little bit more accurate to how it did in the show, but other than that, the coat at the top on the new one just ruins it for me, I just don't like it that much whatsoever, and as well the other one came with the moment, which you know, what can win over that, it's probably one of the best props that they've ever done. Time for Christopher Eccleston now, and here he is in all of his giant eyebrow glory. For some reason, once again, they've decided with this figure, when they're a little bit stuck, they didn't really know what to do with it, so they've gone for the Blue Jumper version, apparently as seen in the Unquiet Dead and Boomtown. We don't exactly know, there's a little bit of a debate behind it, and a lot of people are saying a lot of different things, but at the end of the day, I don't really care too much. It's again a very unusual case for this figure, it's exactly the same sculpt to the previous Eleven Doctor set version with the much more calmer legs and not the disco dancing versions, which at least, you know, that's an improvement. But yeah, very unusual because we have the parting of the ways apparently, even though it says on the box, which I don't really trust that, I think it's the Unquiet Dead, blue shirt underneath, and then we have the jacket over the top, which is now a lot more brown, we have a lot more of a browner wash to this, which is a little bit unusual, however, I kind of like it, I think it looks a lot more leathery, especially on the back there, we have the same brilliant details of the pleathery effect on there which is great to see and then even on the front where we have the buttons and things overall generally the sculpt is excellent and even on the bottom you have the black shoes along with the black trousers i really like the way that that's been done generally overall the detailing on them is great this figure i sort of feel that everything has been exaggerated the eyebrows have and even the eyes look sort of very comic book i don't really like that and even the lips are sort of a little bit pink than usual and also the sort of side dimple on his face is now nowhere to be seen which i do believe is an accurate thing it does tend to be a lot more toned down now you can sort of faintly see it there and it is a lot less prominent compared to that of the other versions but yeah a very unusual figure doing a comparison with the previously released 11 doctors set ninth doctor as you can see generally overall exactly the same sculpt however the battering on the jacket is in fact quite nice however the head sculpt is just wrong i don't like the eyebrows and i think that definitely the detail especially on the hair is a lot more prominent on the original release therefore i do still like that one a lot more and then of course he does also come with his standard sonic screwdriver which is exactly the same to the 50 billion other versions that we've seen previously before nothing new next Next up we have the 10th Doctor which is allegedly from the Shakespeare Code. Now this figure is just as much from the Shakespeare Code as I am, it's just a generic 10th Doctor figure, don't even lie. This figure has been released 70,000 times now in every different release, it's probably the most used sculpt ever from character options history, if not action figure history, it's absolutely ridiculous how much this figure has been used. Nothing really too much to talk about, we have the pinstripes on the jacket underneath along with the blue which has been nicely done, the shirt underneath is now a white version, the black tie which again is quite nice, not really too much paint bleed on that whatsoever and then the trench coat over the top is once again is slightly darker more sort of toffee color compared to that of the original adding back the trench coat now we have the suit underneath once again the same design continues towards the bottom where we have the blue pinstripe and then we have the vans converse whatever they are at the very bottom which once again have been done rather well we have the detailing of the lacing once again very dirty don't much like the fifth doctor shoes for some reason and then we have even this one with a giant line being sawed through it because hey 
quality. Much like a lot of the figures in this set, once again, we do have a little bit more of a paler paint tap on the face. Nothing really too much to talk about, however, not really too much drastic stuff because it is exactly the same from the previous sculpts. However, overall, it looks like David Tennant, and I'm glad that they've not gave it massive eyebrows like the Christopher Eccleston one. Surprise, surprise, he comes with a sonic screwdriver. Who would have thought it? Comparing the new release to one of the many releases of the 10th Doctor in the past, as you can see we have a few differences paint-wise, nothing really too much, generally the new one looks a little bit more brighter than the other one, however, I don't know if I like the new shade of trench coat, I think that the old one is a lot more accurate to what's in the series, however, I do like the new skin tone on the newer one because it looks a lot more lifelike. Of course, the 11th Doctor, this time sporting his Series 5 outfit, apparently from the Beast Below, it's exactly the same sculpt to the first ever 11th Doctor figure that we got in his actual costume. It's a bit of a mix and match figure as you can see on the hair we have some really nice highlights between the different shades of brown along the quiffy piece at the front which is sort of nicely attached to the head a little bit better than the previous versions of the face which has also been sort of nicely done it looks a little bit like matt smith if a little bit dead he sort of looks just a little bit peeved with life to be honest of the tweed jacket once again which I quite know if i like this it sort of reminded me of the christmas carol version we've done this sort of lighter shade with a few darker splotches here and there a few more details around there including pockets increasing as well shirt itself underneath has in fact been quite well done. We have the bow tie which has been done nicely with the burgundy along with the shirt underneath with the cream jacket design along with the brown pinstripe which has been done rather well and what I do really like is we even have the additioning of some cream buttons which I do believe is something that is absent from the original version. And down to the bottom not really too much to talk about the generic legs that have appeared on pretty much every single 11th Doctor figure that we've ever got. The same detailing on this, the creasing, the material, the baggy design at the bottom exactly the same to what we've seen before. And then to finish off the figure at the very bottom get all the different details you'd expect on a pair of boots including the laces in the different sections however what is nice to see is they've been given a little bit of a brown wash which is nice yet unneeded but still nice and then of course to finish off the figure this figure comes with the sonnet screwdriver because of course it would because this incarnation can never keep the sonnet screwdriver out of his bleeding hand Comparing the new release to one of the older releases, as you can see, I generally think that the old one still has something to it that I like more than the newer one. I think that generally the tweed looks a lot nicer on the older one, as well as the design on the head. I think that the new one looks a lot more simple, if anything too simple, and the old one looks a lot more detailed. What I do really like for this new release is the new addition of the shirt, especially the cream buttons, and I really like the new pinstripe. Finally, I would like to say saving the best figure until last, but to be quite honest, I will be lying through my teeth. It is the 12th Doctor, apparently as seen in Time Heist. Now, this is a sculpt that once again has been seen very recently in the recent Collector series, many, many times replicated for many different colours of shirt. It would have been nice to see maybe a red velvet version for this set, or even one of the Series 9 versions that is yet to come out in a slightly different paint app, because even then, the sculpt still exists. It wouldn't really cost them as much, because it is essentially coming out anywhere. Therefore, they should have just put it in, but it would have been nice, considering all the other figures at least have something different about them. This figure is just an incredible letdown of Peter Capaldi is not really the best, it could be a little bit better, a lot more aging on the face, maybe not making him look as miserable as, as he actually does. And then we have the hair which has a few nice details on, a little bit basic though however, could have a few more little curls and things in there, maybe even a little bit longer as well because it's not been that short literally since series 8. Moving on to the Crombie cut, it's a little bit lighter than the original version, and we have the shirt underneath which is the black version with a few buttons increasing on it, trousers which are the light blue as per usual with the creasing in, and then at the very bottom we have the boots which have been done in a little bit of a matte paint job which personally I don't like. I prefer the glossy paint job I've seen on the original 5.5 Collector Series ones as opposed to this version. Getting back the coat slightly we do have the red highlight in there but what the hell is this? It does tend to be a little bit more of a pink highlight as opposed to a red one but I'm just sort of happy that at least they included it to be honest because comparison with some of the other 12th Doctor figures as you can see they're all exactly the same. They all have exactly the same flaws and generally they all have exactly the same lack in detail. The one at the front in case you are unaware is in fact the one from this set which just looks slightly different having a slightly different lighter version of Crombie cut. And as so yeah that's that overall the biggest ever set that I've ever needed to review on this channel and generally a whole massive game of spot the difference just a very expensive version of spot the difference generally some really good highlights in this set more specifically the fourth doctor the sixth doctor the seventh doctor the third doctor and the first as well I think generally all the classic doctors have something to offer they all have some nice little details in there minus the fifth doctor that had just a few meh details really but the new series ones are just 
just the massive letdown. This set could have very easily just been a classic Doctor's Collector set, and I wouldn't have really cared not having any of the new Series 1s, because quite frankly, they didn't have anything to offer whatsoever. They're just there for completist reasons, and it would have just been nice to see something a little bit more different in there, even for the War Doctor figure, and even for the 8th Doctor one, that maybe just have a few different paint apps in there to make it look just slightly better at least. If you can try and afford this, I know that it is the recommended retail of £99. In the UK, it has been incredibly rare, because for some reason the UK got hardly any stock of this, and America has the majority of it. So yeah, if you can in fact track down this set for a decent price and you are a collector, then I recommend it very much, because it is pretty much the idealist collector's piece, and to be quite honest, if you ask me, this is probably the farewell set for the classic line of figures, and it's probably even the new series ones as well, because I really don't think this line has long left. So thanks for watching this review, if you enjoyed it, please do give it a big like, and please subscribe if you're not already. If any questions, please do leave them below, and I'll be sure to answer them at some point in the near future. Thanks again for watching, and I shall see you all next time. So thanks for watching, and bye for now.